You're listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe. And 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe. And worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rick Schistler, your host for the Weekly Business Hour. I'm a Silver Fox advisor and the founder of OneBestConsult.com. Well, welcome to this week's show. It's February 4th. I think we've got a great show planned for you. And if you're in a mood or a mind to talk or listen to about business, this is where you come. Because the Weekly Business Hour is where Montgomery County and businesses really throughout the world come to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve their business, and to be part of conversations that can make a real difference in your business. First of all, I want to meet, uh, make you aware of our sponsor this week. Our sponsor this week is OneBestConsult.com. That's a number one bestconsult.com. Encourage you to check out that website. This is where you go to find common sense business advice for your small business. Check out the website, join our community, get on the newsletter list, uh, get some of the video updates. Uh, you can also find a podcast of every show we've done. So I encourage you. It's all open to you. And if you need a mentor in your life, an advisor, that's where you'll find me. So go to one, number one, bestconsult.com. Also, I want to remind you before I forget, this show is being broadcast on Facebook Live. So if you're a fan of Facebook Live, go to Facebook, look for the Weekly Business Hour page, click on it, and there you'll have the opportunity to join us on Facebook Live. Also, a reminder, during the show or even after the show, if you've got a question, a thought, an observation, even a question about your own business, please send it to me. Just send me an email at onebestconsult at gmail.com. At this point, my encouragement, sit back and grab your pad and pencil and get ready to take notes as we talk about everything business right here on the Weekly Business Hour. And in the studio today, I'm pleased to announce to you that we have a very special guest. We're being joined by Rainey Busby. She's a fellow Silver Fox advisor and a leader in the teaching of the EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System. And she's going to join our Soup to Nuts conversation and lead us in a three-part series examining the idea of using an operating system to better grow and manage your business. Rainey, welcome to the show. Good morning, Rick. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Well, how's the business world going on out there? Are things popping in your world? Crazy. Lots of movement, especially uh, busy during the end of the year and the beginning of the year when folks are starting to think about what's our plans for 2019. We want to step it up from 2018. So that's an exciting time. Well, I think this good economy, if you want to call it that, whatever you want to label, but it's good. Everywhere I see growth, I see new buildings, new new tenants, new businesses popping up. So it is a good time to figure out exactly how to maximize your business efforts. Yes. Well, Rainey, you're a seasoned leader and entrepreneur who has spent your entire career well, uh, really in business and organizations of various sizes. And you've worked in many industries and you've helped them achieve and sustain operational excellence. So you've got a wonderful background. But what are some of the typical frustrations you find with an entrepreneur? Okay, so there's top the top five that I see pretty consistent when I'm out talking to prospects about will this model and, and can you help us? One of the key things is lack of control. And it really comes down to the business is running their life rather than them running the business. So we start to see sacrifices and family time, or just being able to take a vacation. Only about 50% of people can even go on vacation as business owners. And that's a sad place to be. So being able to really take a step back and understand what my life is versus my business life and trying to separate the personal and the business is really key. The next part is people. And this is probably 80% of the frustrations and the complaints that I hear. We don't have the right people. We can't get them in the right seat. So understanding when we talk about people, it's not just our employees. It's also our customers, finding those best customers or vendors or partners that we have to depend on. And then getting everybody laser focused so that we have a consistent message and they understand clearly what's expected of them. So that's a really key piece. You know, that's one of the things that I am personally invested in and work with people a lot is uh, the old square peg round hole, <laughs> uh, which was my father's way of explaining getting the right people 
well, particularly in the employment side of bringing good people in. But you're right. I've expanded it like you have to vendors. Oftentimes we forget mm -hmm. that we got to have the right vendors, right? Yeah. And of course, the right customers, no doubt about it. What about some other things like profit? Where does that play into things? So profit, typically when I start working with my clients, I hear that we have great revenue, but not so good on the profit side. So really understanding revenue growth without a, a good, comfortable level of profit isn't going to get us where we need to be. There has to be a balance of both of those. So many times the profit just isn't there. And a lot of times, gosh, a new client I just launched, he hasn't paid himself in five years. That's really sad, and we have to stop that kind of practice. That is amazing. And I run into people who, when they put their plan together to start a business, plan on not paying themselves, but that's a different story, right? Yes. They're not paying themselves because they don't have the money. Right, right. Well, they're putting money back into growth of the business, but there has to it has to be a nice steady growth. Growth out of control is no fun, and that's usually what spurs a lot of the, the frustrations that they're experiencing. What are some of the other big issues that you run into? So another one is what we call hitting the ceiling. So you start out in business and you're going along and about every three to five years, boom, we hit the ceiling. And it means that business has outgrown us a bit. We have to start delegating. We have to start bringing in key employees that'll be able to take off some of those areas of responsibility so that we can elevate ourselves and start to look at truly growing the business. So that's been a key factor that we really need to get control of. Growth is great. But uncontrolled, uncontrolled growth is frightening. Well, there's no doubt about it. That's like kind of riding downhill with no stop. Yes. Uh, no ability <laughs> to stop, no brakes, they don't work, or there's right over the cliff type. And I have felt that before in my life, and you're right, that's very, very scary. Yes. What's one other issue that you might consider important? Probably the last one, and it's good really bringing it all together. It says nothing really seems to be working. So I like to say, you know, hey, we're on that uh, hamster wheel spinning. You're running fast, you're working harder, you're putting in longer hours, but we're not making the progress. So what do we need to do different? We try the little flavor of the day, and that's not really working either. So really, if you think about those key five frustrations, every entrepreneur, and I always assure the folks that I'm talking to in the first time we meet, you're normal, you're just like every other entrepreneur I've talked to. Well, that's why it makes sense. And, and you're your way of addressing this issue, I find very interesting. You call it an operating system, yes. uh, which I'm big on systems and processes. I believe as we mature in a business that the more we can implement, revise, keep them current, get people to buy into them, the business potentially, if we don't overload, right, we'll find that right balance, we'll run better. Let's talk about that operating system for helping us perhaps alleviate or remove those frustrations. Okay, absolutely. So an operating system, you're already familiar with it if you have a smartphone or if you have a computer, right? You have an operating system that runs that piece of technology. Well, you need one to run your business as well. And so, you know, I have a doctor who's a client, and he says, you know, I went to school, I learned to be a doctor, but no one ever taught me how to run my practice, how to really run the business. And so it's a really nice set of powerful tools and a model or kind of an approach to running your day-to-day -day business operations. So very straightforward, very simple, but you know sometimes we do have to make some hard have hard decisions, right? So or have those hard conversations with folks. But having an operating system just makes life easier and makes your growth more sustainable. Well, I mean, operating system. What's included in that uh, is is the way you envision and try to teach people. Right. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a software systems. That's been my, my career from the start. I was a software engineer. So I always look at things that are um, the, really the user experience, that, that interface when someone is working with the different tools. The entrepreneur operating system, the reason I fell in love with it is because it's simple and it's intuitive. So it just makes sense. But then it also starts with execution skills first, which was a pretty key factor. So if you think about it, there's hundreds of operating systems out there. I tell people just choose one and go with it. But a lot of them start with, let's go this two-day off-site planning. We'll come up with our vision with this lovely, you know, 30-some page document. Then what? Right? We need to be able to execute. So when I work with clients, man, day one, we are focusing on execution skills, and it's powerful. So when they walk out of that room with me, they already have their weekly leadership meeting scheduled. They already know the most important things they need to work on for the next, you know, 60, 90 days. I mean, they are structured and ready to go. So those are two really key characteristics about an operating system. It just gets us focused, 
to have a have a system to run our business in a healthy and productive and efficient manner. You know, you mentioned execution. If I had to pick out one weakness, I find is people will quickly find a plan. They'll find a a way, a roadmap, as I like to call it. But then the hard part comes for them is, and I guess for a lot of us, is to execute, put it in place and execute, as you say, day to day, week to week, month to month in the plan. How do you help people get through that? So the the execution skills is something that I teach them how to master. So I don't care if it's a big, huge corporation or a small business, execution is still a challenge. We have to be able to optimize some key elements of our business. The first piece is we have to optimize our people, right people, right seats, clear on what roles and expectations are, accountability, all the key things that we need around our people. That second piece is processes, what kind of systems. We need to all be doing it the same way. We can't have a lot of different approaches. It, it really starts to interfere with our ability to deliver quality services to our customers, which is our ultimate objective. And then you think about just execution, consistent execution, right? So we're not going to do it for a week or two, and then we go back to doing what we were before. So that cadence is really critical. We have to be kind of all in the game. We can't be kind of half on the field and half not on the field. And I used a lot of sports analogies with Super Bowl yesterday. And then really being able to manage the business, right? So we lead people, but we manage the business. So it has to, we have to have the skills and kind of tools in place to keep our finger on the pulse. So when something goes wrong, we can jump in as leaders. But other than that, we can stay back and let our people run the business, take care of their tasks and their responsibilities. And then last and the biggest challenge is really communication, right? As we grow, communication becomes more complex. There's more people we need to communicate to. And so when I work with clients, that's one of the big benefits. They're like, man, our communication has increased by 80%, even if we're in different areas of Texas, for example. And so that's really, I think, a key area. Well, let me ask you now, you've gone through some really good points. I'm a potential client or a listener today, and I'm trying to understand. But again, I'm use that old analogy, drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> Just in a minute or two that we have left in this segment, how do you start that working for you? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to really get clear on what we call six key components. And uh, in the future shows, we're gonna, I'm going to be breaking those down so people can get really a good understanding. But I'm going to run through them real quick. The first one is vision, and that's getting everybody laser focused where we're going and how we're going to get there. So a clear, consistent vision across the organization. The second one is people. We have to have great people to execute to the vision. It means two things. One, they have to fit our core values, and we have to make sure we have them in the best seat for their strengths. Then another key component is data. And data is really thinking about what are those scorecard leading indicator activity-based metrics that we need to track because what we can see, we can measure. And then also, what are the success criteria for each individual employee? And then we come down, we call this one, one key component issues, but it's really it's ideas, opportunities, anything that's holding us back. Let's get it out of our head, get a list so we can prioritize it. And then I teach them how to solve them once and for all. So we're solving the root. And then we come over here to processes. And that's really looking at those six to 10 core processes of understanding three to four pages, high level bullet points, templates, checkoff sheets, and then holding people accountable to following our processes, which is our franchise model, our way of doing business. And then finally, the execution. So making that vision reality. And saying, how do we do that? We need to get clear on what are the most important kind of key areas we need to move forward in, for the next 90 days. And then that meeting pulse, that weekly meeting at the leadership level, each individual department having a meeting. Everybody is in a meeting so they understand what's going on. We're clear and we're ready to hit the ground run, running when we come out of those meetings. So if you're at least 80% strong in those six key components, you're going to knock it out of the park. You're going to blow away your competition. It is so powerful. Well, I guess we've gone from a fire hose to a garden hose, right? <laughs> yes, that's what I, and that's why with me working with my clients, I help them to kind of calm down a little bit. And, and I am the guide. So the guide to operational excellence, uh, if you're ready to climb the mountain, I'm the guide that's going to help you climb the mountain so we can get up safely and in a nice, consistent manner and then be able to glide on the other side. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're at our first break today. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, Randy and I are going to continue this conversation, perhaps talk about some examples. Uh, we'll, we'll keep the names off the wall, but the mm -hmm. fact is show you how this process can work for you and your business. Please stay with us, and we'll be right back with you.
Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 936- Six four seven three seven seven six. From the beginning, the main purpose of the Cooperative Extension Service has been to change human behavior by teaching people how to apply the results of scientific research. By utilizing a holistic, multi-level approach, Extension Family and Community Health Programs encourage health and well-being for everyone, addressing values, concerns, and needs with reliable science-based information. Extension programs help people lead healthier lives. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. Hey, Montgomery County and online listeners. Thank you so very much for checking out Jazzy Files of Its Own. What? You haven't done so yet? Well, you've got to tune in. Hi, I am the host of Jazzy Vice with So, Miss C.C. Holmes, and I invite you to check us out every Friday and Saturday from 7 until 9 p.m., where you will get the best in... Old school R&B, and of course, a little smooth jazz to make it jazzy. So tune in. That's right, tune in. Every Friday and Saturday right here on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 FM or worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schistler, your host. And we're having a soup to nuts conversation today with Rainy Busby, talking about the implementation of an operating system to help you run a more efficient, growing business. Well, Rainy, we went to the break. We, you talked about the different areas such as vision and whatnot, execution, all the, the bullet points, if you will, that you need to look at. Mm-hmm. But let's kind of relate that to, to real life for our listeners. Talk about uh, a story. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll keep the names uh, for us. Uh, quiet to protect the innocent or whatever. (laughs) But the idea is that to share some examples with our listeners of where you've taken the system and and show us how it really helped a real business. Absolutely. So probably one of my best stories to share and tell is a technology company. They install technology systems. And when I started working with them, it was a young leader, uh, military, uh, West Point grad, family-owned business. When he left the military, went uh, back into the business with his dad, and the business started growing, which was great, but also completely frightening. So he had other leaders that he had been in the military with, and they were trying to run the system and get some stabilization. So when I first started working with them, what I found is that they were totally making some very painful decisions between business and their personal life. They had young children, They were very involved in their church. They weren't able to do the things they wanted to do. And it was starting to affect their peace of mind, uh, their health, right? A lot of frustrations. I mean, I just had a business owner say, I can't keep doing this next year. I said, no, I know you can't and you shouldn't. And so it's really understanding it affects our business and our health. And we only have one body, right? So we need to take care of that. And so within about a year, they graduated early because they were just really strong leaders. We were able to turn it around completely. They went from like 40, mid-40s, number of employees, to almost 100 employees in a year. Their revenue, they added $10 million in revenue over a year because they were able to get stabilization. The leader of operations was so far in the weeds, he just couldn't even see straight. He was trying to be everything to everyone, and what we needed him to be as a leader so that he could truly show the organization where we needed to go. So I think that, you know, and, and you talk to the owner of the company, he said if it wasn't for you know, rainy and using this model, he said, we would have been out of business. He said, we were spiraling down and it was, it was really frightening. So that's always a great story to tell about making a difference and involved in a church now, back family life is great, taking vacations, all the things that we really went into business to do initially was to, you know, love our life and love what we do. You know, it's funny you should say that. That's one of the big things. In fact, I talk about it probably every week, directly or indirectly, is that when we own a small business, it's not just us. We're in there with family, assuming, and, and it could be a mom and dad, it could be a spouse, it's children, but there's always going to be an element of family that's mm-hmm. there, that's vested, even though it may not show on the balance sheet. 
And it's one of the things, I mean, some people call it life balance or whatever, but it, it's, it's more than that to me is that when we make certain strategic or critical decisions, we need to consider that piece of information or that consideration. Hey, how's it going to impact the family if I do this? And I try to tell my clients the same thing. It's just kind of keep that in mind. It's there to some, it's more important than others, right? But I think that's important in what you, the example you've given where somebody freed themselves up again, once again, to spend that time and uh, focus on their family, their church, the things that were really, truly their health, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know. (laughs) So I think that's a critical win-win that you offer through the system. Tell us another story where you've gone into a company and, and implemented with them the EOS. So, um, you know, I do a lot of work with family-owned businesses, which I love, and I'm just passionate about really the small to medium-sized businesses. So uh, one of the little niches that I, that I have is uh, general contractors, right? So I have four general contractors that I work with right now. One is a very large family-owned business. They have um, locations not only in Houston, but also in New Braunfels and then up in Dallas. And so they were struggling with being able to, to collaborate across all those different entities. And, you know, the father was trying to be the visionary, and then he was also trying to be involved in sales and just everybody wearing a lot of hats. Well, when you, the kind of the nuance about general contractors is that they're very dependent on subcontractors. So the folks that are the cement or the framers, or the drywallers, whatever that is. Well, when it talks to um, the perspective of the person buying the property that they're building, they don't care that that's a sub that's from a different business. They look at it as though this is your business, right? You're, you're the general contractor. You're accountable. So really understanding the importance of finding the best subcontractors because they really represent you when they're out there on the site for the build or for the rehab, whatever that is. So um, that was really a huge success story for them to be able to take a step back and understand that you know the frustration with subs was real and that we needed to deal with it. We needed to make sure we had the best people because what they found is they had some superintendents that weren't very good. And so they were damaging the sub relationships. They were damaging the relationships with the customer. And so we needed to get some controls on, under that. So really being able to clearly target the issues, the key issues that are just hurting us right now and solve them once and for all was just a game changer. They're just a totally different company. It's fun to, to hang out with them. They brought their daughter into the business. So lots of dynamics and growth. They're making a profit that they really hadn't made before. They were just barely, and they really had some great projections they wanted to hit. And, and so now all that is their reality and being able to go on vacation. You know, before they were afraid to leave the business because they thought the business was going to fall apart. Now they can leave without being attached to the phone and computer when they decide to go on vacation. It's a real vacation. You know, leave those electronics behind. Well, the, th- yes. the thing you impressed me, what you just said, is the fact that you know, they're in a vendor, what I call a vendor-centric business. There are mm-hmm. certain businesses, contracting, absolutely, because I had been in the general contracting business early in my career. Okay. And so many say, well, we just got to find a sub that will meet a price. And they don't spend any time building a relationship, looking for the best people, checking them out, and then they get in a bigger project, whatever a big project is for them, and then it collapses. Yes. And unfortunately, that happened to us, and I saw uh, the blood on the wall from that. That was a, a real mess. But the idea that you mentioned, I love it, solve the problem once and for all. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one of those minor things, but it really is so important. Let's put it to bed. Let's forget about it. We'll move on to other challenges, right? Yes. And so many small business people <laughs> just sort of, well, well, this Band-Aid takes care of it today and we'll worry. Then it blows up down the road. So yeah. You're like, I thought we solved that. Why did it? Why is it back again? Because we were solving the symptom. We weren't solving the true root of the issue. Yeah. So, I think that's, that's really right. important, and, and it's a good point. You got into this business because you have t- related to me and you and you do in your writings that you had a certain passion. Let's talk about your passion to do what you do. Sure, sure. So I spent time in corporate America. What I really love is the small to medium-sized businesses. Love family-owned businesses. I just like good, healthy leadership teams. They're fun people. They all have, they care about each other. I mean, that's so powerful. One thing that I also enjoy is the, the nonprofits as much as the for-profits. So I have a church I'm working with. I have a nonprofit out in Kingwood that was one of my clients. And it's just wonderful to watch them grow and watch them flourish. And, and what they're realizing is they're a business. 
even though you may be a church and you have a parish, but you're still a business. And matter of fact, I'll be heading out to Austin to speak to another church who's heard you know, the, the responses and the, the results of using this operating system. So that's a pretty key deal. I also like the fact that it works fast, right? So we don't have a lot of time for fluff. I teach them live real time in the room. So when they leave the first day, they're ready to hit the ground running, which is a game changer. Most folks expect it to be a lot stronger and, or a lot longer. And I tell them, I said, you're going to walk out here as a strong team as soon as we get finished. And you're going to be thinking differently, which is the big, we got that mental paradigm shift. That's really a key piece of it. Um, it's a really reasonable investment. I have some clients that are 1.5 million in revenue, and I have some that have 800 employees. So a little bit all over the place, but it works great for small businesses. Even if you're just like a solo entrepreneur like I am, I use it in my business. I have my executive assistant. We meet every week. We use the tools. It's been my first best quarter ever. And so um, I think there's importance around that. We've implemented over 5,600 uh, companies worldwide. There's about 230 of us right now worldwide that have been professionally trained. So that's a, that's a big part. And I, I guess overall, I love business. I want entrepreneurs to fall back in love with their business. And I get the opportunity to change people's lives. And, you know, and I don't say that softly because I literally watch the transformation and they come up and they tell me that, thank God you were part of our calling because we needed to make some drastic changes because it was basically killing us. And now we're able to, to really enjoy coming into work every day and enjoy doing what we do. And that's powerful. Well, you've offered us a lot of great and useful information. And in the spirit of the show, I, I like what you say, the first session, they can walk out of there with some things that they can do. Uh, which is what this show is all about, giving people advice, hopefully ideas that they can go out and, and implement today, tomorrow, just as soon as they can. Let's talk about next week. You're going to be back with us. Give us a little bit of a rundown on what we hope to accomplish next week. Yeah, so next week, I kind of quickly breeze through the six key components. We need to be 80% strong in each one, or we'll be a little lopsided. So I'm going to go back to the top, and I'm going to really drill down and vision what we mean to getting everybody 100% laser focused, the people element, which is always very popular. And then I'm also going to talk about the importance of data, being able to use real factual information so that we can track our progress. So that we're going to really drill down and have some in-depth conversations about those three key components. Well, it sounds like it'll be a lot of fun and a lot of wonderful information. And people that are listening today, I would encourage you and also share what we're talking about today. This can be beneficial and useful to really as Rainey said, any small business, any size, and nonprofits at well. Mm -hmm. And as you, any of you who know me and, and follow us on One Best Consult know I'm deeply vested in the nonprofit world, so I'm interested in learning more as well. Well, that ends our first segment, and I hope that you will stay with us because we've got a wonderful segment coming up after this break. Our businessman on the street segment today will include, will be from Mr. J.J. Holly. Uh, as many of you know, J.J. Holly is the president of the Woodland Chamber of Commerce, He's going to give us his economic outlook for Montgomery County and also share some information about the upcoming Economic Outlook Conference that is sponsored by the Woodlands Chamber. It was my pleasure recently to interview him, so I hope you'll stick around and listen to that. And then our final segment today, as always, I offer my one best consult tip of the week. This week entitled, Are You Sure That Your Employees Feel Value? So please stay with us. We'll be back just in just a moment. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's community radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 
4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. Does volunteering at a nonprofit horse sanctuary sound wonderful? Or are you a veteran or a veteran spouse and think trying a peer group session through a local Horses and Heroes equine program might be worth trying? Henry's Home Horse and Human Sanctuary, located in Grand Central Park by appointment only, is home to a growing number of rescued and donated horses. Visit our website at henryshomehorsesanctuary.org or check out our Facebook at Henry's Home Horse and Human Sanctuary for more information. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schisler, your host. And we're moving on to our segment entitled Businessman on the Street. We have an interview today with J.J. Holly. Uh, he's president of the Woodlands Area Chamber of Commerce, and they're putting on a great event, an event I think all our listeners in the Montgomery County area should consider attending if you're a business owner, business manager, and that's an economic conference coming up. So, J.J., welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, coming to the Woodlands and putting me on. Well, I appreciate what you all are doing with this economic conference. I'm all about education. That's a big part of what we do on this program. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important that people that live in the area have access, particularly business owners, business managers, to great education. So That's right. The more we know, the easier things are. And it, we need to do that. Success right. is sometimes a struggle, and education can help a lot. That's true. Well, let's talk about the economic conference. A little bit of background. What's it all about? Well, the Economic Outlook Conference, this is our 33rd year of doing that. And we try to have a focus on the local, the state, the regional, and the national economy. So after you leave this event, which is on February 8th, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Woodlands Waterway Marriott, and we have a series of speakers that will cover micro, macro economics in, in terms that we can all understand, and you'll leave knowing more about what's going on with the economy than you before you came. You know, that's so important for business people, particularly as you know, my bailiwick is small businesses, which yes. who knows what that is under 250 employees, but mm -hmm. as they make strategic decisions, that's right. they need to have in the back of their mind what's going on with the economy. And you know, I meet a lot of folks, they get the national economy off the news and boy, what a, True. not a great place to get economic information. No. No. Uh, so this kind of conference will really dig into, as you mentioned, the national, state, regional, mm -hmm. local economies what could somebody, if they attend the conference, they're a small business owner, even a Main Street small business owner, yes. hope to walk away specifically as far as information that might help them yes. make a better decision? Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head that it, from a, a sole proprietor all the way up to the largest businesses that we have a couple of Fortune 5 businesses here in the Woodlands, that they will all leave with information that they didn't know when they came in. And no matter how small you are, you, you can't do your business in a vacuum. So you've got to know what's going on. There are issues that will be coming up in our local economy, uh, such as with the Woodlands, it's going to incorporate. So we have Gordy Bunch, who's the Woodlands Township uh, Chairman of, of the Board, so kind of like our, our mayor in the Woodlands. And he will probably talk about uh, incorporation and where they're at and what that might mean to our taxes and our infrastructure. We'll have talks about the county. And a lot of things going on in the county center around transportation, mobility, and then also flood mitigation. You know, had a little event a couple of years ago, uh, Hurricane Harvey, that impacted every one of us, and some of us a lot worse than others. And we have to figure out solutions where we can minimize, because you're not going to be able to completely negate the effects of an event like that, but how can you minimize it? And then Congressman Kevin Brady uh, will also speak, so you'll get a discussion about tax policy, Kevin was instrumental on the uh, being chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee last year in the formation and implementation of new tax policies. We'll have Senator Brandon Creighton, so we'll talk about a little thing called the Texas Legislature, which is in session right now. So there's a lot of stuff going on that you'll you'll learn about the local and the county and the state uh, policies that can really affect your business. 
Well, you know, kind of roll back on that. I mean, at the state level, they're talking about school taxes. That's right. And That's that big. has a huge, huge impact on everybody, every business. Every business and every individual. And, uh, I, you know, it's a concern. We need the educational resources. One of the things I'm very impressed here in Montgomery County with is the quality of education, not just in the public schools, but with Lone Star College, yes. the opportunity to find trained workers, which That's is right. what I'm interested in in business typically. That's right. Uh, you care to comment on that? Uh, workforce development is one of the main issues we focus on as a chamber. We are an advocate on all the important policy issues that if they work, then your business works. If they don't work, you don't have a business. We don't have water, transportation. We don't have a workforce. And the workforce issue is one of the, uh, along with water, well, I'm trying, you know, it's, it's hard to pick which one's most important. But if you don't have the workers, you can't, you can't hire people and you can't run your business. And you, you're correct. We, we are so fortunate to have, um, if not the largest, one of the largest community colleges in the entire country uh, that a Chancellor Steve Head is asked to go speak worldwide about how Lone Star is so successful. And we've got a lot of people here. We've got a very low unemployment rate, but a lot of people that are good people that want to work and want to contribute to the local economy. And, and uh, Lone Star can help them get there. St. Houston State University also has a presence. They're, um, uh, of course, they're a four-year university. They're starting a, a, a school of osteopathic medicine, so uh, doctors, which we have a shortage of doctors and nurses. All those things help an economy work and grow. And you've got to have all the pieces kind of humming in, in, in the engine to, to make it happen. You know, I think that's one of the things that when I counsel or, or advise, mentor or to my small business clients in about Montgomery County is the educational system. And I don't want to spend too much time on it, but we're talking about education through economic We can do a whole show like just on Conroe ISD. Well, and, and the fact is that I'm so impressed as a former business owner, multiple yeah. businesses, that uh, you come here and there's a real focus, the Woodland Chamber and other organizations, mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. on building the facilities, putting the right people in them, and training people. We, so the workforce is here. We are so fortunate to have a school district like Conroe ISD, led by a great board, led by uh, Dr. Curtis Knoll, our new superintendent, who had the uh, conspicuous uh, uh, development of having to succeed Dr. Stockton, which was so well revered, but. Curse is doing an outstanding job, and that is another piece of our economy. If you don't have a good school district, you don't have businesses that want to come here, and they do a great job. Just our, we're, we're lucky, fortunate. A lot of good people are doing a lot of hard work to make it happen. Well, so a couple of questions I, I had in the back of my mind as we uh, put this thing together is what I call pull the rabbit out of the hat, because whenever you do a forecast, it's pulling a rabbit out of the hat. That's right. What's your take? What's the chamber's take on the employment situation going forward? Uh, over this year, next year. We, uh, we are so, again, we're so fortunate to be in, in this area. I tell people, who's got it better than us? Uh, that uh, we have been positioned in the Woodlands because of the decisions that were made 40 years ago and 20 years ago that have insulated us from a lot of sometimes what the, the entire country feel in a recession. Uh, we did have a rough patch when oil was in the mid to low 20s a barrel but we still survived it very well, largely because we're diversified. Not only do we have energy uh, and natural gas, but we also had the petrochemical industry, which actually picked up during that time because oil was cheaper. So it, it's like Harry Truman said, needed a one-armed economist, because when something bad happens, something good happens. But we also have a, um, a great diversity, uh, diversity of, of industries. We have healthcare. I would not be surprised when the Woodlands Economic Development Partnership releases their employment report of the largest employers in the area that healthcare could very well take over energy, oil, and gas as our number one employer in this area. Uh, we have financial services, we have a technology, great technology businesses here. So we have a, a, a wonderful diversification of em employers in this area that help us weather the storm when one industry might be suffering. Well, the second rabbit of the hat uh, question I have is about construction. I mean, when you physically drive around the community That's right. throughout the county, you see lots of construction taking place, yes. all kinds, residential, commercial. Sure. What's your view? What's the chamber's view? Are we overbuilt? Are we underbuilt? Are we right where we need to be as far as 
filling these places up is because population's going up. There's no doubt about that. that. Yeah, that's a good point. Population is going to double in Montgomery County. So we've got just just shy of a half a million folks in Montgomery County. That will double in the next 10 to 15 years. So where do you put those people? And there's a lot of growth in our neighbors to the north and west and, and east. The In the Woodlands proper, we have a population of around 120,000 folks. We are mostly built out from a single family home residential perspective, but you'll see as, and one thing you've got to do is change with the times. One thing we see with the younger generation, people who are in their 20s and 30s, less and less want to buy a home. They want to rent. So you'll see more apartments come available. But the fantastic good thing about the Woodlands is you can live here, you can work here, you can play here. Just across the lake, you see Hughes Landing. You have several companies you can work at. You can live in the apartment complex that's right there. You've got a grocery store, Whole Foods, right across the street from you. You've got restaurants right next door. So as you see demographics change, you see living patterns change as well. And I think our developers in the area have been very astute of recognizing that and adjusting to it. So from a single family home standpoint, we are almost built out, probably 90, 95%. But there's a lot of room on the apartment side and there's still another 20 to 30 percent of available it's hard to tell because of all the trees we've got but there's another 20 30 percent of opportunities to build out commercially and build larger buildings higher rises we want people because it helps our tax base the business community as a whole pays about 70 percent of our budget for the Woodlands Township as a resident we're only having to burden about 30 percent of that so we want those businesses to be here because they help they help uh, pay the bills. Well, that makes sense. And business is so important to a tax base. You can't do it all on just residents. Exactly. Well, let's, we're kind of winding up uh, our time. Sure. Let's kind of go back through the conference, the time, the dates. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of who you're, you've got a great keynote speaker. We let's do. talk about some of that. Great. So again, it's February 8th. So just two weeks from this Friday. And get your tickets now. Uh, Early Bird has ended. Early Bird ends on December 31st. So next year or this year, the end of, end of December, make sure and buy your tickets, save you a little bit of money. Uh, tickets are now $169 if you are a, a chamber member, I believe they're $199 for non-chamber members. And uh, so it's February 8th at the Woodlands Waterway Marriott, 8 a.m. And I did mention some of the uh, speakers uh, earlier. Another uh, speakers that we have are the CEO panel. So we have Mr. Paul Lane, who's the president of Howard Hughes Development. So when you talk about what the build out is like in the woodlands he's the guy that knows literally down to the ground level on what's going on and we have chuck stokes who's memorial herman and of course that's one of our uh, hallmark hospitals here at memorial herman and they're going through some mergers and acquisitions and some changes he'll talk about we have miss sally rayner with energy again energy policy uh, how our electrical grid we don't have power again we don't have business and then we'll wrap it up with a luncheon keynote uh, from John Hoffmeister, who's a former CEO of Shell, but has since started a, a uh, organization called Affordable Energy, which talks about we can't, our economy can't survive and our society can't survive on oil alone. So how are we going to supplement that? How are we going to use more climate friendly, you know, water, uh, wind, solar, those types of things that can help us diversify in energy because like an economy needs to diversify our energy policy needs to as well. Well, you know, it sounds like you got a fantastic program. It's Lots be a great of day. good, good information. Again, I encourage all our small business owners, uh, managers, anybody in the business world, they need to take time. It's a half a day, roughly eight to one, uh, luncheon included. Buy a ticket February 8th. I would encourage you. If you need more information, you can go to the woodlands.org. Woodlandschamber.org. Chamber. I always yeah, leave not that dot out. Not .com, dot .org. Dot .org. Yeah. And I appreciate J.J. Holly, you're a busy man. Well, Lots you. of great things going on, and I appreciate you taking time to join us. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll stay with us. When we come back, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, I'm going to give you my one best consult tip of the week. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schiff. Many people don't eat enough fruits and vegetables every day. The Better Living for Texans program is here to help you learn how to make healthy menu choices, save money at the grocery store, prepare quick and delicious meals, get more good nutrition in your day, 
and get more physical activity. Classes are fun, friendly, interactive, and free, and taught in English and Spanish. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 936- Six four seven three seven seven six. Hey, Montgomery County and online listeners. Thank you so very much for checking out Jazzy Vibes with Soul. What? You haven't done so yet? Well, you've got to tune in. Hi, I am the host of Jazzy Vibes with Soul, Miss C.C. Holmes, and I invite you to check us out every Friday and Saturday from 7 until 9 p.m., where you will get the best in old school R&B, and of course, a little smooth jazz to make it jazzy. So tune in. That's right, tune in. Every Friday and Saturday right here on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 FM or worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your host. Thank you for joining us today. This is our fourth and final segment for today. This is where I offer my one best consult tip of the week. But before I do that, I want to encourage any of the listeners here that are in the Montgomery County area, uh, particularly in Conroe, the Woodlands, any of the business centers we have around the county, your business can be an advertiser on this show. You can sponsor the show. It's not very expensive. It's very easy to do. And you keep your name out in front of all kinds of businesses located around the county, in fact, around the world. But the reality is it's a very simple process, and I would appreciate if you have an interest in that, just send me a quick email right here at the station, Rick, R-I-C-K, at IRLoneStar.com. Say you're interested in learning more about being an advertiser. I'll send you some information. You can take a quick look. We can talk about it and see if it fits with your advertising and marketing plans. Well, one best consult tip of the week. Are you sure that your employees feel valued? There's no simple answer to that. There's no doubt about it. But I think it's something every business owner typically assumes, dangerous word, right? Assumes that their employees know that they are valued because they pay them on time, because they uh, talk to them when they pass in the hall. They do all these simple things. But the reality is that many, many times employees or a particular group or a certain employee feels disconnected to the business. And there really is no reason for that in most cases. Question I ask everybody, how difficult is it for you to find a good employee? How difficult is it to find and hire? It's a process that many small business people don't participate in very often, but when they do, it can be kind of excruciating because it kind of takes us out of our normal flow. It's almost an extraordinary thing to do, but it's one of the most important things that we do in our business in any given period of time. So once you've gone through this process and you've identified and have found a good employee, why risk losing them? Because they feel disconnected. There's just really no reason to do that. Observation uh, that I'd make in today's business world that the focus on hiring, because in this economy that we're experiencing in many places in the country, it is so difficult to find people, much less find good people, that we have stopped looking at our own workforce or stop spending any time or reduce the amount of time. And I'm in general feel there's a a disconnect occurring across the board to some degree, but many companies get it and they do a lot of good things. And there are steps that you need to take as a manager or owner of a business to build the value or self-worth of your employees. I wrote a blog about this last week. It's been posted Uh, giving you some of the steps. And I want to talk about some of those things because the action is the first thing you need to do is check your communication. Uh, Look at how you communicate, uh, whatever the communications are in your business. I mean, are you outgoing? Are you friendly? That's the easiest one that you communicate with your employees. But we communicate not only good things, but bad things. And how do we communicate them? They're written communications in every business. They're 
notices posted around the business. Don't do this. Don't do this, this, that. How friendly are those? Don't laugh. But this makes a difference because reality is the number one reason people quit a job is they don't feel connected. They don't feel that they're being appreciated in the business. And you don't want that to happen to you in your business. Let me assure you of that. So here's some steps, and and I'm going to kind of digress for a moment. I'm going to pick on one kind of employee to give you some examples. Recently, I was reading and I came across an article, Why Remote Employees Are Most Likely to Quit, and some steps you can keep to maintain them. And I think there's a couple things in this article. It was written by Adam Robinson. He's the co-founder and CEO of Hireology. Uh, Some things in this that Adam points out that apply to all employees. First of all, with And again, I'm going to zero in just for a moment, remote employees, people that are working remotely. It's an area of employment that's growing. I find it even in the smallest businesses where people, particularly in the accounting area, the administrative area, are allowed to work at home certain times. Uh, Again, some people outsource, but a lot of folks will allow employees or in a particular time of need and emergency for an employee to work remotely. And one of the things that Adam suggested for remote employees, and again, This may not apply directly to the people that show up every day, punch in and punch out, but the concept is really good. That's video uh, conferencing. I mean, the mistake is if we have remote employees, if we have a salesperson on the road, we think email's enough, but it really isn't. Think about yourself. Is all you want to have a connection to your business is going to be email and occasional report, or would you rather show up on a video conferencing where you can talk to the employees, get to see other people? I mean, it is a connection that's not exactly sitting next or across the table from someone, but it's a more human connection. So that's one of the things he talks about. Make sure every employee that is remote has access to good quality technology. Every computer should have a camera in it. And that applies to people that are not even working remote. The key thing here is give your employees the tools that they need to communicate. Many businesses don't think about it. And again, this takes many forms. This could be meetings just to talk about what they think could be done to improve the business. I mean, what's on your mind? What do you think? Um, A lot of folks don't think about that when they own a business. Solicit ideas. We used to have the little box, right? We put a box with a drop slot and people would drop their ideas in there, sometimes anonymously, sometimes not. Well, today you need to look at people, look them in the eye and give them a chance to express their opinion if they so want to. Another thing you can do to communicate better is host company events. Have the employees and sometimes their families. Bring everybody together. Do it on a business-like basis. Bring all the employees together or maybe in groups and talk about where the business is going, what's going on. Share as much information as you feel comfortable with the employees. But again, the idea is they get to see each other because many times people work in different areas of a building and you really don't know the other people. It's an important thing. And the other thing is the feedback. And I mentioned this earlier. Be sure that you give the feedback. Uh, it's it's interesting. I want to make this as a sidebar before I end this piece. But 91% of the employees who are working remotely feel more productive. Kind of interesting. It's like closing your door. Don't bother me. Let me get my, get my work done. On the flip side of that, as a manager owner, think about that open door in your office, whether literally or you have a policy that allows people to talk to you. Communication, communication, communication. Make sure your employees know that you care about them and you value them, not only for their skills, but also for who they are. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the show. And I, again, appreciate you joining us today. I hope you will mark on your calendar to join us again next Monday, 11 o'clock. Rainy Busby will be back with us and talk about operating system. She gave you a lead in today. We'll get a little bit detailed into those different steps that you go through. So I encourage you to next Monday, 11 o'clock, the weekly business hour. I encourage you if you miss part of the show or you want to pass on part of the show or re-listen, there's a podcast and that podcast is posted on the weekly business hour page right here on the station, IRLoneStar.com or on the weekly business hour Facebook page. You can find it there as well as many other social media sites. Thank you for joining us, and remember, stay in touch with what's happening here in Montgomery County right here on Lone Star Community Radio. And I'm going to grab my hat now and take my leave, 
and I encourage you to do what I'm going to do. Keep a focus on what's important in your business. Until next week, this is Rick Schisler.